before we used the beams, we had a lift that was very similar to this one. We had one motor that lifted from four points using slings to go over a V-hole, a bay boat style boat such as this one. Then we converted to the catamaran, which required us to uh, rework the way that the lift uh, uh, hoisted the boat so that it came from beams, not from slings. For a quick overview of the entire system, we've got two motors that lift from two, four, four different points. So each motor lifts two points. Those two lifting points go down the rope here to the pulley, which turns into one rope. We've got a weight there. And then you've got your PVC pipe, which acts as a roller down to the beam itself. Another thimble, wire, rope clamps there, aluminum I-beam with a two by 10 uh, bolted to the top of it and then rubber mat on top of that that the boat actually sits on. When you're setting yours up, one thing to take note of is the quality of your clamps. Here we've got one that is obviously smaller than this one. Um, I recommend getting the bigger ones. They're meatier, heavier duty, have less of a tendency to uh, cross, cross thread, especially if you need to uh, loosen them and readjust them. Point is, be aware that not all of this hardware is created the same. You see some already some rust staining on it. It's 304 stainless, not 316. 304 is the stronger. Uh, 316 is more corrosion resistant. So rinsing this stuff off and oiling it from time to time is very critical. This is a closer look at how the wood lays on the beam. The wood is bolted down. The mat is screwed down. The beam is aluminum here to this point. We use the weight, this lead weight here, to keep the uh, weight on the system. When the beams are in the water, they have a little bit of a tendency to float. Since the wood is on there, so the weight keeps tension on the system itself. We use the PVC pipe uh, to cover the rope where we've got it doubled over here on the slack end. This is where the weight's at, and this is slack. We've got that doubled over, and this protects that from flapping around. It also serves as a way to uh, bump of the boat as you're coming in. If you were to hit it, it'll roll like that. You can see there's a mark here where this um, rub rail before has made contact with it. Um, so it allows you a little bit of margin of error as you're coming in to bump the plastic. We use horse stall mat. This type of mat's available at just about any kind of equine supply, feed store. We found this at a lo local fencing company in Galveston County. And this stuff is, is, has got grooves on one side, which is somewhat unusual. And, and for your project, it may be worth seeking out this exact type of mat. The back side of it is flat with like a diamond plate pattern to it. Um, this is the side that's down on the wood. And the reason is we like the grooves because it gives uh, moisture a place to go as it, uh, you know, it comes up out of, the, out of the water and it gives it the moisture a place to run off. It also allows for when you're fastening it down, if we used uh, just some Harbor Freight stainless steel screws, seem to hold up pretty well in salt water actually. Use these that are about a half inch long and when you screw them into the groove here, that head will go down in between the grooves and uh, prevents the uh, screw from ever coming in contact with the boat, which uh, you know, another reason for the grooves is the water runs out and it keeps moisture from staying in contact with the boat, which we all know can cause gel coat to blister. Uh, we found this stuff relatively easy to cut. We used a regular old uh, utility knife and we'd run it in the grooves here, give it a cut. Two, three strokes was usually about all we needed. Just cut, cut, cut. Stuff cuts pretty easily. Uh, it's good use, it's very heavy. Uh, it helps the, the whole entire system, so. We highly recommend using horse stall mat for your project.